third year PhD candidate at UMSL in Dr. Amy Dunlap's lab. Um, the research that I'm working on here at Litzinger is part of my dissertation for my PhD, and I'm interested in how sweat bees behave in urban settings, like at community gardens that we see in St. Louis, and then at um, kind of suburban type prairies like we see here at Litzinger, and comparing that to kind of the natural systems that we see out at like a Shaw Nature Reserve, and if their foraging behavior varies at all across those three landscapes. So when we're assessing behavioral differences, the number one thing that we're looking at is foraging behavior. So how the bees are actually getting pollen off of these flowers. Um, foraging is not only important for the bees because that's how they feed their young, but of course it's important for pollination. So what I do is I film the bees on the flowers and I'm slowing that film down to really look at the, the maneuvers that they're doing to collect pollen and comparing that across all the sites to see are they gathering pollen in a slow, methodical method? Are they quickly moving from flower to flower, which of course affects pollination services in general? And we're really taking that on a pretty comparative level. My name is Ezra Kruzic, and I'm a senior biology student at UMSL with a neuroscience certificate working in Dr. Dunlap's lab alongside Rachel Brandt for her PhD project. And what we're doing is we're analyzing the differences in genetic material in these sweat bees to see how those differences in genetic material lead to differences in behavior. And I'm really interested in this reductionist approach because I like to understand how differences in neurobiology can lead to major differences in behavior and personality and various things. And the more that I learn about these bees, the more that I can hopefully learn about humans. So that's kind of what I'm doing in this project. So once the bees are collected from each site, what we do is we flash freeze them and take them to the lab where I, I take them to the lab where I dissect their brains and extract the brains and put them in preservative solution to be kept under refrigeration so that when the season's over, we can send those, those samples to the lab and analyze the differences in their genetic material so that we can understand how the differences in genetic material might lead to differences in behavior. So, of course, we get questions all the time. If we're trying to save the bees, why would we collect the bees and take them from their habitats? Well, of course, we need to know a lot about what's going on, not only with the bee as it's out foraging, but also in its brain. And so when we take a very, very small subset of the bees that are out there, particularly social bees where they have large colonies, maybe 200, 300 individuals per colony, we're really not doing much damage to the population as a whole because they have plenty of workers that can take over and do what they need to do. And also they are reproducing more than once a year. So we have young that come out both in the early spring and again in the fall. So we're really not doing too much damage to the population as a whole. 